Welcome back, guys. How is everybody today? I have finally reached 100 subscribers. Earlier, I almost said, because we're going to be doing a giveaway in this, in this video. So I almost said 1K giveaway because it just rolls off the tongue so easy. And then I realized, no. This is just a 100 subscriber giveaway, but it doesn't matter because that's so awesome to me. I love it so much and I appreciate each and every one of my subscribers and, you know, people starting to comment more and I'm getting to know you guys and I love that. So to these nails, I definitely made some, uh, mess ups a little bit even though you can't tell they're beautiful nails so i don't have an issue with the nails the finished result was just fine but uh yeah i'm gonna point them out to you guys because i don't want anybody to think that i try to act perfect or that i don't make mistakes because i definitely do you know i just move forward from the mistake do my best to fix it learn from it and not do it again so my prep routine i'm already i already pushed back the cuticles and i filed the free edge of the nail even though it's not necessary i like to know that there is no peeling or chipping on the free edge that could cause any lifting you know any sooner than it needs to be because you can get lifting on the free edge of your natural nail. It can start to pull away from underneath the extension. So I always do my best to clip back the natural nail and kind of give that edge um, a nice little file so there is no peeling. Um, after I pushed back the cuticles, and filed the free edge i go in with my needle nose cuticle bit and this thing gets up every little bit it has little teeth on it and i use it at 3000 rpm and it cleans up amazing and it is super gentle super easy to push up under that live skin you know, severing the connection between the live skin and the nail plate, all that dead skin in between, it just eats through it and it helps push back the cuticle area. Amazing. I love it. I love this bit. This bit is just the dream bit for cleaning out the cuticles. And then after going in with the cuticle bit, I go again around the cuticle area pushing back the cuticles still with my mandrel bit and then taking all the shine off the natural nail and i just kind of feather if you notice i just really quickly feather through the nail and that's it i make sure that i hold the bit flat to the nail and yeah I always do an overhanded grip position and move the nail the way I need it. And her her cuticles, she has hang nails and dry skin. I don't usually clip cuticles, but all of her little um, hang nails and like her cuticles are kind of hanging off jagged. I needed to clean that up, otherwise I would have ended up hitting it with the acrylic. It was, they were um, hanging down over the nail plate, so I definitely had to get that out of the way. When I apply tips, I, especially on flat nail beds, I hate having to, um, I hate having to what do you want to say? Blend that wing on the edge. So I just clip it off before I even apply the tip. 
and it helps the tip apply way easier. I hate those little wings at the corner of it. And then she has super crooked fingers. So I will get into how I apply tips on crooked fingers another day. <laughs> we won't get into that one today, but I can tell you that with flat nail beds, it really helps to clip that wing off the side of the tip. Ooh, I'm so excited for this 100 subscriber giveaway. It's gonna be, it's gonna be so much fun. And I will give more details in the video in a little bit, cause you gotta watch, you gotta watch. So then I always, she wants ballerina. And I am so tired of this shape because <laughs> I've only done this shape once. Uh, okay, and I'm already tired of it cause I sucked at it for one and it's hard it's a hard shape man it's hard but I go in and I make sure that I bring up those sides because the sides were kind of rounded out a little bit so I take my file at a 45 degree angle you see it kind of part of it's under the nail and it's a 45 degree angle just about and yeah it it hits it makes contact with the lowest point of that side and brings it up and i just make sure that i make contact with that lowest point and hold my file straight and slowly that point starts to come up and then once my file is hitting the very tip of the nail and up near the nail bed and it's all flat against my file, I know that that line is straight. So I just bring up that, that part that's hanging. I only touch it, only touch the very tip of that, the furthest out point with my file. I hold my file straight, start filing, and then slowly my file will start touching more and more of it as I'm filing that edge up. Once my file is touching the whole side of the nail, I know that that nail is straight. And then I stop because I don't want to over file. So this goof butt wants shorter thumbs than the rest of her nails and that's so she can do hair. <clears throat> and I get that. But she really thought she was going to argue with me over the length of the rest of the nails. Like, no, no, I want to do long nails. I told her, I want to do long nails. Nobody on YouTube wants to see little short nails. It's not happening. You have to keep the length. She argued with me over it. Really argued. And she won. I took them down just a little bit just a smidge just to make her happy but i really wanted to do a super long set on her and she just broke my heart she broke my heart into pieces but i always make sure that i compare both hands and then you know making sure that the length is going to be the same on both hands every finger compared together and then here I go in and I blend the tip into the natural nail. So I'm going to be doing acrylic and you do not have to uh, file over the tip creating texture. Acrylic will hold to a shiny tip. But I do it out of habit because I do do builder gel nails and poly gel. No, not really. Never mind. Don't let me lie to you. Don't let me lie. I don't do poly gel on real humans. That would be a total disaster. I'd be mad. But I do do, I do do, <laughs> I do builder gel on, you know, certain people. So especially ones who like short nails. I like builder gel for short nails. Here is my triple threat prep routine dehydrator, non-acid primer, and then 
my Amelie pH protein bond. So my dehydrator obviously dehydrates the nail. Then my primer from Beauty Secrets right here. Oh wait, that's a lie. This is the dehydrator. I'm a liar today. So that's the dehydrator. And then my primer is going to be a non-acid primer from Beauty Secrets. And it is not a sticky bonder. It once it dries, it looks like it dehydrates the nail plate a little bit more. So it it does not leave that double-sided tape feeling for you. It looks like the nail is just dehydrated more. It does not leave any type of residue. So once that is dry, I go in with my sticky protein bond from Amelie. I get that off of Amazon. And this leaves a sticky layer for the acrylic to attach to. And I hear a lot of people refer to it as their double-sided sticky tape for the acrylic to the nail. So I kind of figure with my routine, if this is the double-sided sticky tape, then my Beauty Secrets primer, non-acid primer, would be my super glue. So how can you go wrong with super glue and double-sided tape? You can't, these nails last. The nails that I do now, I used to struggle, and it wasn't even that long ago that I struggled with doing nails and getting them to stay on. So this is a routine that I've found within the past two months. And ever since I've started this routine, nails don't come off. And by that, I mean, they last like five weeks going strong. So I love this routine. Now to the, <laughs> to the nail design. Okay. I'm trying to use, um, like five or six colors, you know, um, blue, teal, sky blue, light purple, dark purple, shimmery purple, white, whatever. I'm using a lot. So I'm not used to doing marble. I don't really marble with acrylic that often, but this design I kind of had to because she wanted, well, not she wanted, I wanted, this is a freestyle. So this is a design that I picked out. Um, I wanted it to be a little bit of like mermaid unicorn style colors and I wanted you know one nail to be a French with the marble one nail to be an ombre with the marble and two nails to be all marble with the butterfly on them so my marbling technique sucks this is something that I struggled at and I struggled because I was using such small beads. If you want to marble, I don't suggest you use small beads. I have marbled since then and using big wet beads and plopping them in the middle of each other and then swirling over the whole nail, not being scared, you know, it was so much easier than doing it this way that I'm doing it here. So this is me really struggling to get all these colors into this nail and, you know, make it look marbled. Even though the nails look super cute at the end. If you was if you're a nail tech or somebody who loves nails and I was to say, yeah, these nails are, you know, like aqua marble nails and you look at them, you can tell it's not a marble. It's not. It's uh, a hot mess of colors. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. Some of it looks marbled, but some of it just doesn't. And 
I mean, it's cute. It turned out cute. But I can't call this a marble. So I have gotten better and I will go into marbling. What is it? Is it the next one? Yeah. The next video? No. Yeah. Because, okay. I'm confused. Don't worry. I'm always confused. Uh, I'm always lost. <laughs> so yeah, using small beads like this, um, I felt like I had to with all the colors I was trying to get into the nail. But it was so much easier, you know, the nail that I've done after this, doing it with just like two colors and big, big beads, big wet beads. This is going to be my ombre, and it turned out good, but again, I struggled. I struggled so hard with this ombre, trying to get um, the color to blend over these dark colors. Um, I just kept going in with small, really wet beads and blending down until I got the opacity that I wanted because I was really worried if I went at the cuticle with a big bead not only would it bulk the nail up if that big bead didn't blend the way I wanted it to I would have to add even more to keep blending until it became an ombre so I figured I would just do it in really little super wet beads and I accomplished it I mean it looks great the blend looks great in the end but could I practice this a lot more yeah I, I definitely could uh, I need to get better at it so I'm not perfect, um, especially blending over dark colors. Usually when I blend, I blend with small beads, but I don't blend over such harsh colors. Um, these colors are harsh. Even the white, that bright white is harsh to blend down over. So definitely, you know, I think think if I was to do it again, I would probably just do a bunch of small beads again until I get better at regular ombres over, you know, lighter colors, pastels, or just a white. Because I can do that, and small beads blend easily over those. But these colors here were, you know, a little bit harder to play with. So definitely, you know, just do your thing and practice that's all I'm doing <laughs> I'm still just practicing <laughs> I don't know if there will ever be a point to me doing nails that I don't consider myself still practicing <laughs> I think that you know there's always going to be room for improvement so that's just me and I always try to stay humble and not you know get too big of a head and think that I got it all figured out because I don't, and I'm not going to act like it. Uh, while I'm doing these, you'll always see me wiping the sides of the tip and pushing in. Because I'm trying my best to keep the shape. Even though I didn't do very good. I've gotten so much better at my application. But I'm not used to doing coffin <laughs> or ballerina. So... I kind of lost the shape and you'll see that when I go into filing um, or after I file you'll see because oh look at this look at this look how good I did I did that little French uh, so perfect and I did it in one bead I did one medium size wet bead and it laid so great i am so excited and here i use the file to make sure that i round it off where i want it rounded off at and that it's even on both sides 
and then I go in with my file straight up and down. I want the wall to be straight up and down because if you go at it at like a 45 degree angle, it, it messes it up. Just keep your file straight up and down, 90 degrees with that little wall that you're making. Now here, I went in with a bead and it wasn't big enough. So I'm working the bead and I'm making it into the shape that I want it. I'm cutting it with my brush. And then I go in with another bead just to add height. So when I go to file, it's easier to file that wall. If you don't build it up high enough, it's going to be really hard to file for one. And for two, you're running the risk of not it not looking right in the end. It, I don't know why. I've tried to make small little French nail beds before and it ended up not work, looking right, having to encapsulate over the nude. It just, it looked crazy to be honest. So this nail, we are going to do the ombre again. Look, I use bigger beads and look at that. It turned out so pretty. Oh, so see, bigger beads, big wet beads help so much. Trust me, they are so much easier just to swoop and play with. Oh, and there I made a mistake. I accidentally pushed on the wet acrylic below it. So when you want to do an ombre and you want to do it over a color, don't you don't need to really bring your colors up this high because you're going to run the risk when you go to file and you have ombre over that color. When you go to file the nail back into shape and you're filing your sidewalls, you could potentially file the through the nude down to the color. And then it kind of ruins your ombre. And I've done that before. So just a tip, you don't have to bring your colors up that high. And then this nail ombre super easy. I don't know what, what the difference was, but the ombre for this worked very well. See, and it just, it did it. I didn't, I didn't have to fight this nail so much. Um, and yeah, that's an ombre over little, I don't know. I think of this as like mermaid unicorn colors. I'm not sure, but I do know that I love it with the holographic butterfly. Okay. So to the giveaway, the giveaway is I reached 100 subscribers and I want to give away a dip kit. So Here is the set that I plan on giving away. It says that it is acrylic dipping powder. So that means that you should be able to use it with monomer if you decide to graduate from dipping to doing acrylics. And if not, that's fine. You still have a dip powder kit. So this can be used several different ways and you know, you can look into that. But this is the kit that I will be doing the giveaway. And the giveaway rules are, you have to subscribe to my channel. You have to comment your IG name and answer my question. How long have you done nails? And if you aren't doing nails, would you like to get into doing nails? That's the question. So subscribe, IG name in the comments, and answer that question. If you like doing nails, how long you've done them, or if you plan on doing nails. Also, this giveaway will end March 15th, and the kit um, that I'm giving away 
if something ends up happening and it's not available on Amazon when it comes time to ship to the winner because it sucks trying to ship um, items, especially if they're flammable or whatever, on your own. And I have Amazon Prime, so it's so much easier just to have the stuff shipped straight to that address. So when it comes time, if that kit is not available or if something else could possibly happen, I will get with the winner and we can either figure out a different kit or, you know, we'll figure it out, you know. <laughs> they're getting a dip kit that's all I can say a nice dip kit acrylic dipping kit so if you know you want to switch it up you got options here I am encapsulating these nails and again <clears throat> I'm starting to lose the shape if you notice the nails are starting to get wider because of doing the marble and focusing so much on, you know, making sure the marble was looking nice, I accidentally let them get a little bulky. So that's totally fine. I can fix that in filing, but I did make more work for myself losing that shape. And that's disappointing. And since this set, I have made a vow to myself to not be so sloppy with my application because I was the queen of filing. I always thought, you know, it doesn't matter what the application looks like. As long as, you know, my filing was good, I was good. And, you know, I could file the crap out of some nails and it never really mattered. But now that I'm getting better and, you know, doing good, I wanted to start doing better on my application. And so, yeah, I definitely have been working on that. Wait till you guys see this next set. Oh my God, the next set that I'm going to be putting up is so amazing. It is out of this world like, I love this next set. If I can do this set on my nails, it's happening. This next set is just gorgeous. I have never, I've never done a set so beautiful that I came up with. So I'm so proud. Um, but I'm proud of this set too. This is a freestyle. I did this on my own. Of course, I go through Instagram. I see inspirational ideas. I've seen people doing marbles and doing, you know, butterflies and stuff like that. But I didn't look at a picture to do these nails. This was the color scheme, my idea. Each nail being different, my idea. The butterfly sticker over the marbling, my idea. There might be a set out there that looks like this. I don't care. It's, it's hard to be totally original. But I'm so proud that, you know, I came up with this idea on my own. Obviously, I do have Instagram and I see other people's pictures and stuff. So, yeah. But I, I chose to do it like this, not looking at a picture. This was all out of my little brain. <laughs> so when I encapsulate, I always try to keep the sidewalls as I keep, try to pat in the sides of the nail so that they are not getting thick. I didn't really add thickness while encapsulating, I just kind of realized when I went to encapsulate how much of the shape I had lost from doing all of that marble. And this is not the Savvy Land clear acrylic. I'm becoming very disappointed with that acrylic. That acrylic is not as clear as what I want it to be. Um, and when I did the black and silver nails, it looked like stuff was floating in it. And I always use clean monomer to do my clear. 
and I clean my brush really good because I don't like my clear to be foggy when I encapsulate. And then, you know, the Savvy Land clear acrylic is harder to get the bubbles out. It's like a, I don't know, I don't know, coffee, coffee, coffee. <laughs> it was getting late at this point. We had taken an hour to pick out these colors and then, you know, finally I gave up on her brain and I was like, well, let me show her these butterflies. I want to use these holographic butterflies and maybe this will help speed up the process. So after an hour of her trying to decide on her own what colors, I showed her the butterflies and she chose these colors. Well, no. Uh, yeah, she chose a purplish teal holographic butterfly. It shines purple and teal and blue in the light. So when she chose that butterfly holographic sticker, because I have several, I got reds and oranges and silvers and golds. When she chose that one, then I knew, okay, we're going to go with these colors because they complement that butterfly. So it definitely helped to show her what my plans were to speed up the process of figuring out what these nails was really going to look like in the end. So that's a tip. If you're struggling with figuring out what colors you want to do, then think of what, you know, what medium you're going to use as the art. And then sometimes that helps pull it together. But yeah. And here are some coffin bulky nails. Oh, Lord child. Oh, I'm disappointed in myself with these nails because I really let myself go on the application and it really messed me up. You know, we uh we we started filing these nails at one or two o'clock in the morning and I was just frustrated. I was really frustrated because she wanted ballerina for one and she has very tiny nail beds. So sitting there and filing on long nails for her kind of starts to hurt her nail beds kind of. So I only got, you know, I, I filed the shape pretty well and I didn't have much left to do, but I said, all right, let's take a break. So we went to bed and woke up the next day and I finished filing these nails while we were sitting on my couch watching TV. <laughs> and I'm just saying all of this because I want you guys to know that, you know, it's not always perfect. It's not always this, um, it's not always this fairy tale ending you know, to doing nails, especially on your nail journey and still being new. I've only been doing acrylic for six months, maybe tops, six months, maybe. And, you know, it, it's, I'm getting there, but I just want you guys to see that it's not, it's YouTube editing makes it look so much easier than it is. And I just want to point out to you guys the mistakes that I made so that you can see, you know, I know that there's people out there still trying to learn doing nails and they get discouraged because they watch these videos. Ooh, look at that. Finished file nails. <laughs> so pretty. <laughs> Don't get discouraged, okay? It's, it's easy to make it look easy on YouTube, but in real life, you know, the struggle is real and yeah, I'm not used to doing coffin or ballerina nails and this set definitely got me. <laughs> so I do show part of the filing and I am blending in the cuticle area and then I am making sure that the nails are buffed really well over the top and even looking down the barrel of the nail 
uh, filing flat on the top of them right here filing flat so that I make sure that there is no bumps or lumps on top of the nail so what do you think I mean they're supposed to be ballerina nails they're supposed to be but you know I think there's still a little bit of ballerina they're definitely not a strong coffin they're they're a little bit daintier than a coffin <clears throat> next time I'm gonna look next time I'm gonna look at a picture of ballerina nails because I'm not used to seeing ballerina nails so yeah and here I go in with my cuticle pusher again <laughs> <laughs> I always try to push them cuticles back out of my way because I do not like them being up on. I try to get the application as far back as possible. So I am always pushing them cuticles back so that once the application is done, once the cuticles come back into their normal place, it looks like I, like the nail is coming out from the cuticle. That's what it looks like. So that's why I'm always pushing the cuticles back so I can get the nails as far back as possible. And once the cuticle does come down, it looks like it's coming out of the cuticle. And then I always go over my finished filed nails with primer just to fill in the scratches and make the top coat look even shinier. It is a godsend for clear nails that's for sure if you're doing clear nails and you buff over the top and get it as smooth as possible using primer to fill in the scratches is a really good idea even though these aren't clear nails it still creates a beautiful glossy shiny nail after you top coat and these are the butterflies Oh, buddy, these definitely, oh, this would have looked so great, Matt. She will not do matte nails. I'm so tired of her. She won't do bling. She won't do matte nails. She didn't want long nails in this. Like, I'm tired of her. Me and her are about to not be friends. <laughs> she doesn't let me do everything I want. So sad. Everybody should feel really bad for me. So applying these butterflies, I make sure that I put the two nails that are going to be the two halves up together and make sure that where I'm placing them, they're going to look like the whole butterfly <clears throat> when the nails are together. You don't want to place one butterfly all the way up in the cuticle and then the other butterfly on the other nail all the way at the tip and then, you know, when she puts her nails together, they're not going to be even. So definitely watch your placement and then I'm taking out all the little bits before I pull it off because it would be so hard to do that after pulling it off. And then when you apply, you just make sure that you go straight up the center the straight line and then you know try to keep the wrinkles out and rub rub as much as possible getting you know it to blend in with the nail you don't want any pieces sticking up you don't want any wrinkles sticking up because you're going to be top coating over this this is the last layer of design and you do not want it to be sticking up. Make sure that you're pressing at every corner and every wrinkle. I definitely took my time with that. And here is top coat, shiny top coat. Oh, this would have been adorable, Matt. Whatever, they still turned out bomb. So, <laughs> oh, I love it. I'm, I'm getting so much better with my designs. I'm just so happy. So definitely, and I do plan on doing a video showing my acrylic application and, you know, my, my method or process, what helps me. Because in the beginning, I definitely did it differently on each nail. 
and it really messed me up. So I have a set routine now and <clears throat> it has definitely helped my speed in the end. So, all right, guys, make sure that you subscribe, make sure to hit that notification bell and make sure that you return again and watch some more videos. There's videos up plenty you can watch um, and enter the giveaway. Definitely. Uh, it will end March 15th. I will announce a winner. I hope <laughs> I hope that there is a lot of people that enter. All right. So I will see you guys down in the comments and have a great day, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I want to be a weekend lover. Yeah, I'm going to be the best damn lover you got. I want to mess up your covers. Here's your time.